Hi everyone, my name is Joana Proens and today we're going to talk about this Department of Elementary and Secondary Education exercise of CS15 Introduction to Database with SQL. This exercise is about week one where we learn how to join tables, how to get one subquery into another and this will be pretty much the goal of this exercise. We're going to solve 13 tasks using these commands we learn on week zero and we learn this week. In order to download the source code, you have to click in here and follow those steps. Once you download it, you need to see 13 files of SQL and one file for the database, okay? Our database contains five tables and how they are related. So let's take a look at this schema. We have a district table and if we take a look, the district table contains the ID of the district, the name, the type, city, state and the zip code. We have, so the district makes zero expeditors, so they are not connected. So the district is connected with expeditors and if we take a look in here, we can see that we have this district ID, the pupils and per pupil expeditor. We have the staff evaluation and the staff evaluation is only connected with the district table. So we have the district ID, evaluated, exemplary, proficient, needs improvement and unsatisfactory. The district also contains the school, so if we go to the school's table, we have the district ID, the name of the school, type, city, state, and the zip code. And the school is related to the graduation rate, the fifth table we have in our database by the school ID, graduated, dropped, and excluded. Okay, so this is pretty much the schema we have for the database and how we're gonna use these relationships to get the content that they will ask us. All right, so let's do the pretty, let's start with the first one and then we're gonna understand the other ones. So your colleague is preparing a map of all public schools in Massachusetts. In 1.sql, write a SQL query to find the names and city of all public schools in Massachusetts. So basically they want all the schools that are in Massachusetts and they're saying that keep in mind not all schools in the schools table are considered traditional public schools. Here we can see that in our schools table we have different types of school. We have the charter school and the public school. So I want to get all the schools, the name of all schools that has stayed in Massachusetts and that are public schools. So let's take a look how we're going to write this. So I'm going to do a select. Here we want to select the name and city. So name and city. If we take a look in here, these are the two columns. From schools where the state is equals. And we see here in the table that the state is MA for Massachusetts. And the type is public school. So let's copy this and we're gonna say type equals true public school. Okay? If we run here, we're gonna get the name of all cities with all the names of the schools in Massachusetts that are public. All right, let's go to the next one. Now uh, your team is working on achieving all the data. Write a SQL query to find the name of districts that are no longer operational. As districts that are no longer operational have the num up parenthesis string at the end of their name. So if we take a look here at the districts, we have some names that contain this parenthesis num up for num operatum that it's not operating anymore. So our goal is to find all the names of the districts that doesn't contain uh, schools anymore. They are no longer operational. So we're gonna do select, let's see what we need to select, the name of districts. So name from districts where name like and this we saw in week zero has something before known up and can contain something later. Okay so this way we're trying to find a substring in the word of the district. And when we run it, we will see a list with all the names that contains num up inside. All right, let's go to the next one. So the Massachusetts legislature would like to learn how much money on average districts spend per pupil last year. Write a SQL query to find the average per pupil expenditure. Name the column average district per pupil expenditure. Okay, here they explain a little bit what we have to do. So we're going to get this expenditures table. We're gonna get the average of pupils in here. So let's write our query. So select. And we know that there is an aggregate function called AVG per pupil expenditure from expenditures. And we're gonna call the name of this column as the string they gave. So we should see only one table with one column and two rows, one for the name average district per pupil expenditure and the average here. I don't think we need to round. So this is pretty much what we need to do. Let's go to the next one. Some cities have more public schools than others. In 4.6, 
SQL, write a SQL query to find the 10 cities with the most public schools. Your query should return the name of the cities and the number of public schools within them, order from greatest number of public schools to list. If two cities have the same number of public schools, order them alphabetically. So let's do step by step. We need to find the top 10 cities with the most public schools. And we need to query the name of the city and the number. So we're gonna get the schools table here and we need to get, we need to count how many public schools we have in each city. Okay, we have some cities that are the same and we need to count in a, some way. If you remember from the lecture, we have a word called group where we can group our table by some things. For example, in our case, we want to group by cities. So we're going to group, we're going to have all the cities with their number and their name and we can get how many schools we have in there. So select name and count name, sorry, so select city because we want to know the name of the city and count name from schools where we need to get the type public school. So where type is equal to public school and we want to group by city. So let's see what we have so far and then we do the following. So here we're gonna get for every city because we're grouping by cities we're counting how many schools we have. Okay so as we can see here the Springfield has 64 schools, there are some with three and so on, but we want to get the ones that has the most, right? The top 10 cities with the most public schools. So here we need to order by count name. And here they are telling us to change the name of the column. No, that's fine. And let's see what we have in here. If we run this way, we're going to get from the ones that has lowest to the highest. So we need to change here to the ES. See that it's the descending order. Now we're going to have the highest at the top and the lowest at the bottom, but we want the top 10. So we're going to limit by 10. So limit 10 and this way we're gonna have the top 10 as we are expect. Okay, so this is pretty much what we need. Let's go to the next one. So the department would like you to determine in what cities additional public schools might be needed. Write a SQL query to find cities with three or fewer public schools. Your query should return the name of the cities and the number of public schools within them, order from greatest number of public schools to list. If two cities have the same number of public school, order them alphabetically. And this is something I also forgot from ordering alphabetically. So here in this query, I'm going to order by count name and also by city. Okay, now let's run this query again. Now they are ordered by name and city. Okay, we're going to do pretty much the same. All right, but we don't want the top 10 anymore. Okay, so if we trade out, we're going to get all the public schools with their name and order as well. But we want the ones that has three or less schools. So we want those ones in here at the bottom that we have three or less. How can we do that? In, we saw in the lecture that the group by keyword can also be used with the word having. And this word having is used here to specify a condition for the groups. So we want all the cities that are our groups that have three or less count name. So having count name less than or equal to three. Oops, less than or equal to three. Let's see if we can get our query. Actually, the word having must be before the order. So if I run it again, we will see that here we have all the cities that has three or less. And you will see that we're going to stop at three. Okay. And one extra thing, they want us to order from the greatest number to least. So, so far, so good. And here as well. Okay, perfect. Now let's go to the next one. The department wants to assess which schools achieve a 100% graduation rate. We're going to write a SQL query to find the names of schools, public or charter, at reported, that reported a 100% ra uh, graduation rate. Here at graduation rate school, we have the school ID and we have the graduated uh, percentage. So we want to find all the schools that have graduated equals to 100. So let's try it out. So I want to select star from graduation rates where graduated is equal to 100. Okay, let's see what we have with this query. So, oops, it's not graduated. It's graduated. Okay, I have a typo here. All right. So here we're finding everything we know about the schools that that graduated is equal to 100. Okay, but we don't want to display everything. We want to display the name of the school, but we can't get it from here, right? We don't have the name of the school. We only have the school ID. So if we run it again, we will see that we have the school ID. But again, this is not exactly what we want. We want to get the name of all the schools with this ID. So we're going to write a subquery. We're going to say select name from schools where ID is in this list of the subquery we just created. Okay, so let's see. We know that this, this is a list of numbers 
141, 248, and we want to get the name of all these IDs in this list. So if I run it again, instead of displaying the IDs, we're going to get the name of everyone who had 100% for graduated. Okay, let's go to the next one. So the department is preparing a report on schools in the city of Cambridge. Write a SQL query to find the name of schools in the Cambridge School District. So here we're going to find all the schools that, have, that are in the district of Cambridge. Okay, so let's start getting this query. So select star from districts where name is equal to Cambridge. Okay, so if we run this query in here, we're going to see that we only have one, one district for this city, this city name Cambridge. All right, that it's in the Cambridge School District. So here we find what is the idea of the the city of Cambridge. Now with this idea of this district that is 81, we need to get the schools that are in this district. So we're going to select the name of all schools where the district ID is equal to the one we just found. So we're going to work with subquery. So select here, we want to select the name of the school from schools where district ID is equal to 81. All right. But instead of hard coding the number 81, we can do something we saw in the lecture. We know that this query here will give us the ID 81. If I change this query to get the ID, it will give us the ID 81. So instead of hard coding 81, we can paste in here the subquery we just worked. All right, so if I fix in here some things, and if I run, we will see that we are gonna get the name of all cities that are in Cambridge. All right, let's go to the next one. So now for the sequel, this next exercise, a parent wants to send their child to a district with many other students. Write a SQL query to display the name of all schools and the number of pupils enrolled in each. As we can see in here, we have the name of schools in the table schools, and we have how many students we have in the school, in the table expenditures, and they can be related by the district. Actually, they don't want the name of the school, right? They want the school district. So here we have the district ID, and this expenditures table can connect with the district's table by the ID and the district ID. How can we combine both tables? As we saw in the lecture, we have the join keyword and it will help us to combine two or more tables together by their information. So for example, in the lecture, they were mentioning about the sea lions and the migrations. We want to know the distance of each sea lion that each sea lion uh, had. So instead of searching here for the idea of a spot and searching his ID in migrations, we can join both tables and we can have one huge table that combines both of them. Them. And the way we combine is saying join the name of the table on and we say we specify what two columns are the same in two different tables. Okay, so here in migration ID, it's related to sea lion ID. So if we find here the, the sea lion 10,484, we know that his name is Aya and the distance we can see here by the other ID that the distance of the sea lion is 1,000 in seven uh, in a hundred days. All right, so this is pretty much the ID. Instead of searching in one table and then searching another one, we can combine both of them. And this is exactly what they're asking us to do. We want to know how many students we have per district. All right, so let's just start. Uh, let me remove this in here. Let me clear a little bit the things we've been writing. So here, I want to select the name of all schools, districts, and number of pupils enrolled in each. So I want to select name in districts. So select name from districts. And here we want to combine this districts table with another one. So here we're going to use the word join, the table we want to combine that is expenditures on, and we need to say which columns are the same. They contain the same data. The ID in the districts table contains the same information that the column district ID in expenditures. So we're going to combine these two tables using 